Alright guys, welcome to this page of the notes. Now what we're going to do is finally get to that second objective where we're going to take a look at Kramer's Rule and how you can use Kramer's Rule to solve a system of equations. We're going to start off easy. Uh, we'll start with a system of um, two equations, but we'll eventually work our way up to a system of three equations. So highlight a little bit of important stuff for you here. One of the ways that we're going to use what we just learned being uh, determinants, finding the determinants of 2 by 2 and 3 by 3 square matrices, uh, is we will use those determinants to help us solve a system of 2 or 3 equations. Now, you'll remember um, from earlier in this chapter, right, we learned a couple of different ways of solving systems of equations um, that you also would have learned in Algebra 1. We could graph them, um, which is certainly a good way. It definitely takes way longer, but it's a fine way to find uh, a solution if your system has one. Substitution, uh, remember substitution is uh, only works in a very specific case, right? Uh, if you have a variable that has a leading coefficient of one or um, one of your equations has already been solved for that variable, then substitution would be the way to go. Otherwise, we're going to use elimination, which means we're going to add the equations together and get one of those variables to drop out. But what we want to now do is use a different method. Uh, and in fact, in some cases, it might even be a little bit faster or easier to use matrices uh, in order to solve that system of equations. And this is going to be known as Kramer's Rule, um, setting up these matrices and finding their determinants, using those to find the solution to a system of equations. So let's go ahead and take a look at the kinds of things I'm going to be asking you to solve and how Kramer's Rule works. Next page of the notes, what I've got for you guys here is uh, the way Kramer's Rule is going to work. So right up here at the top of the page, I have a generic system of two equations for you. Please notice a couple of things about my system of equations, all right? A, B, F, and G are coefficients in front of my variables. My variables are X and Y, right? In both equations, X, Y, X, Y. Two unknowns. Um, X and Y, so I need two equations, right? I need the same number of equations as I have unknowns in order uh, to solve this system, and I do. Uh, X and Y are my variables, two of them, two equations. But that means that A, B, F, and G are just simply coefficients. A, B, F, and G are coefficients. They could be positive, they could be negative. But they're just coefficients. They're numbers in front of our variables. And then the last thing I just want to point out here is that M and N. M and N represent constants, right? It's what the equation is equal to. So M and N would just be numbers, constants, right? M and N are constants. Now, this is definitely probably going to look better. I know you're looking at this going, holy cow, look at all those letters. Uh, I get it. I understand. Um, I think it'll probably make a lot more sense to you as I run through a couple of these with numbers. So I'm just briefly going to show you how Kramer's Rule works, and then we'll jump right into some example problems because I think you're going to like that better. But here's how it works. What you're going to need to do first in order to do Kramer's Rule is you have to find the coefficient matrix. Well, we know what the coefficients are. A, B, F, and G are my coefficients. So how do I write a coefficient matrix? Well, I'll put A, B, F, and G into a matrix. Yeah. Now, what you're going to do with that is you will need to find the determinant of that coefficient matrix. So I'm going to ask you to find the determinant of matrix C, which means that you will be finding determinant of matrix C. C, right? And this is this is really easy, right? It's just a two by two square matrix. So finding the determinant of this guy, no.
no problem, no problem, no problem at all. Okay, now here's how Kramer's rule. Beyond that, what you're gonna do is once you know that coefficient matrix and you found the determinant of the coefficient matrix, uh, here's how we're gonna solve for the variable x. We're gonna solve for the variable x. That coefficient matrix, the determinant, this is gonna be a number, right? Remember, determinants are always numbers. A times G minus F times B, right? I'm gonna get a number. That number is gonna go in the bottom, all right? I'm gonna set up a ratio and that number, that determinant is gonna go in the bottom. But what goes in the top? Well, here's how it works. Since I am solving for x, right? Since I'm solving for x, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to ignore the coefficients for x in my coefficient matrix. So the a and the f, right? Because those guys go with the x's. We ignore them. We leave them out, right? And I keep the y coefficients, b and g. There they are right there, b and g. But I can't just leave the x coefficients out. I have to replace them with something so that I have a square matrix. What am I gonna replace them with? I replace them with the constants that my equations are equal to, m and n. I now have a two by two square matrix that I can find the determinant of. That's why I put it inside of the bars, right? So you'll find the determinant, m times g minus b times n, whatever this number is divided by the determinant of the coefficient matrix, right? And you will have your value for x. It's just that simple to solve this system uh, for x. To solve for y, I think you'll recognize the pattern. We're going to divide by the determinant of the coefficient matrix. But this time, I'm solving for y. So what coefficients am I not allowed to use? Well, I can't use the coefficients that go with y. I'm solving for y. So we leave the b and the g out. We leave them out, right? So this b and g, they get left out. What do I keep? Well, I keep the a and the f, right? Because those go with x. There they are, a and f, a and f. But I can't just leave the B and G out or I won't have a square matrix. So what do I replace it with? Replace it with the constants that your equations are equal to, M and N. I have a two by two square matrix. I can find the determinant of that. So let's go ahead, jump right into an example problem. I'll remind you of all of this and we'll see how this works. All right, let's do this one first. Okay, I have First, I need to check and make sure I have a system of two equations. I have two variables, x and y, um, and I have two equations. So we're all set, we can solve this guy, and I need to start off by finding my coefficient matrix. So C, all right, my coefficients are going to be three, minus three, uh, negative five, and a two. All right, so that's my coefficient matrix. I have pulled my coefficients, the numbers in front of my variables into a matrix. Now remember, I need to find the determinant of this matrix in order to do uh, Kramer's rule. So let's go ahead and find the determinant of that coefficient matrix. Well, this is easy. It's just a two by two matrix. So three times two is going to be six. Negative three times a negative five is gonna be a positive 15. Six minus 15. So I get a minus nine. My determinant from a coefficient matrix is a minus nine. Let's go ahead now and find my variable x. Remember the way that this works. What we've got to do is my determinant for my coefficient matrix goes in the bottom. So minus 9 is going to go down here. Now in the top, I need to set up a square matrix. But because I'm solving for x, I can't use the coefficients for x. I have to replace them. I'm going to replace them with my constants, 2 and negative 8. I can keep the other ones though, minus five. These are the coefficients for y and two. Well, now what I've got is a two by two matrix, which I can find the determinant of. Two times two is four minus negative eight 
times a negative 5 would be a minus, or I'm sorry, would be a positive 40. All of that is still divided by that minus 9. 4 minus 40 is going to be a negative 36. Again, we're divided by a minus 9. And a negative 36 divided by a minus 9. Turns out that this uh, system of equations, the solution, the x value, is 4. Let's find the y. Well, y works the exact same way. i got to set up a ratio. The minus 9 goes in the bottom, just like it did for the x, right? The determinant of the coefficient matrix goes in the bottom. But now the matrix I set up up here, I can't use the y values, the negative 5 and the 2, because I'm trying to solve for y. So what do I replace those guys with? Well, I replace it with my constants 2 and minus 8. But I keep the x value, the, the coefficients in front of the x, 3 and minus 3. Well, once again, I've got a 2 by 2 square matrix, so we just go ahead and find the determinant. 3 times a negative 8, minus 24. I'm going to subtract from that three, or a negative 3 times 2, which would be a minus 6. Careful, watch your signs. That's all divided by a negative 9. I'm going to add the opposite, add the opposite, so minus 24 plus 6 is going to be a minus 18. Minus 18 is going to be divided by that minus 9, and you wind up with a positive 2. So, the solution to my system of equations is going to be 4, 2. Uh, and again, remember that what this means, because I have a solution, my system is uh, consistent and independent. Consistent and independent. These represent different lines, and they do intersect. Consistent and independent. Let's go ahead and try another one. And if at this point you feel comfortable with Kramer's rule, try this one on your own. See how it goes. And come on back and check and see if you got what I got. Well, I first need to set up my coefficient matrix, so let's do that first. I pull out my coefficients, 5 and 3, negative 6 and 4. So 5 and 3, negative 6 and 4. Now, what I need to do is I need to find the determinant of that coefficient matrix. Well, this is easy. It's a 2 by 2 matrix. So 5 times 4 is 20. I'm going to subtract. 3 times a negative 6, which would be a minus 18. Careful, watch your signs. 20 minus a minus 18. You would add the opposite, and we wind up with 38. 38. All right, let's find the x. Thirty-eight goes in the bottom. Okay, I cannot use, because I'm solving for x, I cannot use my x values, so I'm going to replace them with my constants, 15 and a minus 29. Let me make this guy a little bit bigger so I don't run out of space. I don't want to be squeezing. It'll look weird if I squeeze. Extend that line a little bit. There we go. That should give me quite a bit more room. So 15 and minus 29. Now that I've replaced my x values, I keep the y values, so negative 6 and 4. Right. This gives me a 2 by 2 square matrix, so I just do the diagonals, right? So this is going to be uh, 15 times 4 is 60. Minus 29 times a negative 6 is 174. All of that's going to be divided by 38. 60 minus 174 leaves you with a negative 114, and a negative 114 divided by 38 should be a minus 3. Find the y. 
Same way, divide by 38, but let's set up our matrix. Well, since I'm solving for y, I keep the x values, the 5 and the 3. But now I replace the y values with my constants. So 15 and minus 29. And we do it again. It's a 2 by 2 square matrix, so we should be getting pretty good at this uh, at this point. 5 times a minus 29 is going to be a negative 145. We're going to subtract from that 3 times 15, which is 45. That's all divided by 38. And a negative 145 uh, minus 45, uh, I get negative, uh, negative 190. Negative 190 divided by 38 is a minus 5. Hopefully, guys, at this point, you are getting the hang of using Kramer's rule uh, and how we can find the solution to a system of equations uh, by evaluating the determinants of the matrices we can set up using the coefficients. Guys, head on over to the next page of the notes. I've got a few more example problems for us there to try, and I'll meet you there.